Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'd like to thank you, first off, for being with us here this afternoon for this press conference uh, related to the two-day visit by the OSC Office for Democratic Institutions and Human Rights uh, related specifically to the situation of Roma and Sinti here in Hungary. Uh, as you are likely aware from the advisory for this event, the meeting has, uh, the visit has included high-level meetings with uh, our dear director, Michael Gilk, right? uh, as and members of the Hungarian government, as well as a visit to the city of Miskolc, which was earlier today. So on the outcome and uh, the, the, basically on the visit so far, I hand the mic to Michael to tell you about Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for attending our press, point of our press conference today. It is indeed, of course, it shows a lot of interest, of course, your presence here. We thank you for your interest, and we will distribute at the end of the press conference a written, also press release, certainly not cover theme, covering everything, which we will now have in the Q&A, but covering the main points in our visit. And let me also say that, of course, we have the intention but this will take some weeks or months, of course, also to make a report on this visit. This has to be well prepared for summer, especially. But today, of course, we can share with you our main impressions we had uh, yesterday and today. And as our spokesperson, Tom Reimer, said, we had indeed very good, I have to say, fruitful discussions with the government yesterday with Minister Barok. We had a very, very interesting and I also think uh, fruitful visit to Michels. We had discussions with um, uh, the, not only, of course, the uh, self-government, um, Roma minority self-government representatives and the Roma civil rights movement of Michels, but also certainly with the deputy mayor um, and his states um, touching upon the, all the issues, of course, under discussion in Mishkos. But why is what you're doing that? What here, as uh, an institution in the OECD, which is dealing with the topic of protection, inclusion of the rights of Roma and Sinti, is tasked since 2003, so quite a long time already, in the action plan on Roma and Sinti to assume, I quote, a proactive role, a proactive role in analyzing measures undertaken by participating states. So it is not something, of course, we have imagined what we could do. It is one of our regular activities. And I'm happy to share that with you because usually what here many people think what here that is about intellectual observation or human rights observation in general. No, it is especially also about the action plan on Roma and Sinti in the whole of the OSCE area. Today on the podium with me is Miriam Gawli, our head of department for this very important topic. Maybe she can also, in the Q&A, in the, uh, after the, my remarks, also um, enter into the answering part together with me. So it is a current task that we have, and in the framework of this, of course, this visit also to Hungary has to be seen. Therefore, I want to remind uh, that OCE commitments, our common rules in the OSCE, via the 2003 Action Plan on Roma and Sinti, oblige the participating states, including, of course, Hungary and all others, to implement effective anti-discrimination legislation to combat racial and ethnic discrimination in all fields, including housing. This was uh, today, this visit is also a follow-up visit to a previous OE visit to Hungary in 2009 to assess the human rights situation of Roma in the country with a focus on the escalation of violence and attacks against Roma in Hungary prior to the visit. We express appreciation for Hungary's engagement and cooperation with ODIA, including, and in addition to this visit, ODIA's periodical reporting on the implementation of Roma-related commitments, as well as teaching about and commemorating Roma genocide in the Second World War. We would like to inform you that since last year, ODIA has been monitoring the situation of Roma in Mishkos. 
and engaging in communication with Hungarian authorities on that matter. This two-day visit therefore focused on assessing the current human rights situation of Roma and Hungary, especially the recent developments with regard to social inclusion policies targeting Roma, in particular in the areas of education, employment and housing, as well as the situation regarding security concerns, anti-campaigns and hate speech. Uh, I told you, of course, already about our partners which we, who, who we met, both in Budapest and in Miskolc. Um, for us, the main results, which I want to summarize briefly, you will find them also in the press release, but let me summarize them before we come to your questions. For us, the main point today made, to make today and the main results for the time being is that we call upon the Hungarian authorities and particular on the local level leadership to take a stronger role in implementing social inclusion policies and promote equal rights and opportunities, including for all. Then the local and national authorities, and here we know, especially after seeing today, um, in the settlement called the Number of Streets, that the local authorities have really a responsibility to assume. Um, these authorities, they have to provide to the vulnerable Roma communities um, sustainable and non-discriminatory housing solutions. We would like to underline, therefore, that integrated housing solutions, integrated housing solutions, can also support desegregation in education. Another topic which developed at all educational matters during our visit, where we have touched, as well as with Minister Balog, but also today in the talks in English course, how further steps can be made in this area. In this very desegregation in education. We would like to remind also, as one other result, that in the provision of social housing, authorities must adhere to OSCE commitments prohibiting discrimination on the basis of race or ethnicity, what some call ethical profiling, and international human rights standards on the right to adequate housing. We would like to share our concerns that, unless immediately addressed, discriminatory and exclusive measures by local authorities in the area of housing might set a dangerous precedent and set a negative example for other areas. Welcome, of course, that is something we have to very clearly say, a welcome from our side. We have noted the uh, very important recent judgment of the Hungarian Supreme Court of the Kubria in May and the report of the Hungarian Commissioner for Fundamental Human Rights, the Ombudsman, on the measures undertaken by the local council regarding the housing provided to Roma residents of Mishkos. This is a very important clarification, and we call on all authorities, both local and national, uh, to, we are still not where it did not happen until now, to immediately address these uh, uh, rulings and the findings of these two institutions both the Ombudsman and certainly in the Supreme Court, and implement their recommendations, and especially prevent that things like that can happen again. You know, this is mostly also about the very, very complicated question of uh, when compensation is being offered for uh, moving out, out of the area of the London streets, but uh, of course in connection to moving outside of the city limits. This, this, this has uh, and I think it's very important that it has been declared illegal by the Supreme Court. This was an important clarification. Now, of course, more follow-up is needed. Therefore, uh, in the end, it is about providing adequate and sustainable solutions without discrimination in housing, in education, and in all other areas of civil life. Here, of course, on all these issues, our report uh, will touch base in a more detailed way. Uh, we will remain in contact, of course, certainly with the national and the local level in order to concretize our findings. And now I will be happy to share with you, of course, the time for the discussion. Please feel free to raise your questions. Yes, uh, so with questions, I'll just ask you to raise your hands, please. Uh, and uh, before you ask your question, if you will have a microphone, sorry, if you raise your hands, we'll have a microphone right around you. 
Before you ask your question, if you could just give your name and the media outlet for which you're working. Hi, uh, thank you, Andrew Byrne from the uh, Financial Times. I'm just curious. I mean, you mentioned uh, one of your statements and statements about the uh, the possibility that the Actions taken by local authorities in Mish calls considered negative precedent or example. I'm not sure which term you used. Could you elaborate on those concerns and if you've seen evidence or have concerns that authorities elsewhere in Hungary or in other countries uh, may be adopting a similar approach to uh, to social inclusion and housing? Well, certainly, of course, um, all over the whole places, of course, there's always a negative precedent. Um, when you have, after a um, collecting of signatures, of over 35,000 signatures in this course, uh, where people were being called to sign uh, a, a list uh, where they called with a signature for abolishing slums, and then they suddenly discover that one of the, uh, even their own housing areas is being concerned of that. I think that is a bad example. Therefore, uh, I think it is important to see this residential area of the so-called unnumbered streets, to see it, we have been there today, and we can see, of course, well, what I, in my terms, would certainly not call slum. Uh, because it is a, a residential area, certainly, of course, we have some development refurbishment uh, is needed as in many places, but it is, of course, certainly an area where people sometimes in over 70 or 80 years are living and rightly questioning why should they live. We don't interfere in urban planning, that is not our job, but when we have the impression that urban planning is mixed with ethical or racial questions, then we have to raise them yeah, because we don't want this to be repeated, either in these schools or wherever. And we hope we say that we hope that solutions will be found on the place in close cooperation between the civil city societies and the, uh, the self-organization of the Roma in Mishkos, because that is how it also according to the Hungarian law should work. There are elected representatives of the Roma self-government. Uh, we know that the dialogue between the city municipalities and the elected self-government has been, or even is, still, uh, let's put it like that, challenging. And thanks to, for example, organizations like the Maltesa, who help in promoting this dialogue, this can happen, but a direct uh, dialogue would certainly be uh, demanded. All this, of course, underlines that there is ample space for improvement of the situation, and we hope very much that a positive solution, in the interest of these people living there, with their families, since over 60, 70 years will be found. Peter Murphy from the French Press News Agency. Um, you just, at the very start, you said that you had a fruitful discussion with Minister Bala. What fruit can you tell us about? What, what actually happened or anything concrete from that discussion? Um, also, is there, did you meet the mayor of Mishkos? And if not, why not? Is there a reason you didn't meet Mayor Krizan? Um, thirdly, um, is there any sort of positive signal or sign that you see that there will actually be steps towards a positive solution in Mishkos rather than hope? Unfortunately, we did not um, meet the hope. Uh, the mayor uh, personally, we did meet his, his deputy. We meet the commissioner uh, um, for especially these questions and also this housing area um, appointed by the municipality and the deputy police chief. Um, this was from the side of the authorities, the local authorities. Um, when I said fruitful um, in the meeting with Minister Balog, I especially want to underline that I, that I had uh, the impression, of course, that, for example, also in the minister's role in, 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 in trying to facilitate the situation, bringing people to the table, uh, I think these are positive movements and these are, uh, these are indeed positive steps. Uh, also the minister in uh, trying to bring the, the Maltesa, for example, there 
in facilita facilitating the situation that can help. But the fruit, of course, in this case, does not mean that the whole thing is settled. We touched yesterday also about questions how we can further cooperate, for example, on how OTO can train law enforcement officials. Uh, it's something we do uh, uh, very much, of course, in many countries in the OSCE area, in training new law enforcement officials, police, for example, uh, on respect of human rights when uh, promoting security. Our approach is, when doing security, is always a human rights-based approach, a human rights-centered approach. Therefore, we train, we offer to participating states, and that was one of the topic yesterday with the minister, we offer instruments how we can train law enforcement officials to, in, to actively deal, protect, and implement human rights when dealing, of course, with security situations. That is part of our standard exercise we are doing. Uh, and we have um, we will often, we will hear make concrete proposals to the Hungarian government uh, for project cooperation in that area because we think it would indeed be, of course, good and welcome, of course, to have this. For the time being, when it comes to the number three, it is only hope uh, because right now uh, we have seen today uh, that one house that was already being demolished, demolished there. We have seen the hope in the eyes of the inhabitants and we have seen also the many, of course, we have talked with people uh, who already had to leave and now are living in other houses or sometime, sometimes without any compensation, which was also happening. Uh, we have seen, of course, the, the, the situation which is far from satisfying. Therefore, we hope that there will be, uh, in a dialogue, in a dialogue on the spot between the authorities and civil society organizations and the Roma self-government, a solution, uh, of course, hopefully also with the help of the national level, because certainly, of course, uh, this is something which, which, which is being uh, watched in the OSCE. But um, the first address uh, here, the first place to address that is on the local level. And then, of course, we hope that, that that solution can be found, maybe even to maintain this area of the settlement, because if you see it, you see that it's really a unique settlement uh, of uh, high uh, urban value, I think also of architectural value. Certainly it is old, yes, but it stands for something and has a tradition. And therefore, of course, it would be good to find a solution and then we will closely follow the situation also in the future. Follow-up, did you ask to meet the mayor? He said no, or he wasn't available, or what happened? We had, we had we, as always, of course, we asked to meet the city authorities, and the authorities themselves decide, of course, who is available. But you can be sure that we make, made, uh, and we, that we will also in the future make our points very clear, uh, because what we say, we don't say it only to the mayor or to the deputy or to the police chief, we say it to the authority as a whole. And that is why we will also now uh, continue to work on that uh, in preparing our report, which will certainly then, of course, later on also be published. Because our principle is always uh, to, uh, in our reports, we are doing, of course, to be and to publicize them.